So I know I'm really strong and I'm jacked and I'm handsome and lean. Oh, okay. Uh, but there's a lot of guys here running some gear and they're a lot stronger than me. Do I think it's fair? No, it's not fair. I mean, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look how good that haircut is. <laughs> I can't argue with that, I can't fight with that. Look at that body. He's got some selfies, it looks super jacked, but I don't know. It's rough sometimes, I beat myself up, but all I can do is my best. It makes you think about life though, really ponder. Next to a guy on steroids doesn't bother me. The reason why is because I've been natty my whole life and I've been competing versus guys who've been on steroids and not even have known it, like college football. So what I look at it as it's just me versus the next man. Regardless of what he's taking, it all comes down to willpower and heart, baby. So if you get a guy who's next to me who's on steroids, typically he's gonna recover faster than me. But what I do is it's mostly about the longer that we go, the more of an advantage that I have as a natty guy because it comes down to endurance after that. So where does the muscle endurance meet the strength and recovery that this guy's getting? And really in the long run, I feel like I got the advantage every time. Sure, it's certainly a variable that we're always conscious of, especially when we're trying to help another lifter. Um, first thing I'll ask them, hey, are you on the gas at all? Are you, um, are you, are you drug free? And we're gonna approach things slightly differently. Um, the, the big picture is pretty much the same. Um, if you're gonna be drug free, we can't handle the volume and we can't handle the intensity and the, the, the totality of work has to be a little bit less. You know, technique does not change at all. Frequency of training is not gonna change at all. Just the workload a person can take and how quick they can recover. And we, we always ask that question. I tell the guys, hey, if you're doing anything, let me know. Because um, it helps me give you a good answer. If, if, you, if you mislead me, I'm a little bit lost trying to help you out, help you out with, uh, with, with the protocol to follow. So it's certainly something we think about. But uh, most people in here, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't change who we're training with. One guy may train a little bit heavier. And we know when somebody's doing something, they're making, they're making big jumps and big strength gains that we want to gain, that we want to have ourselves. But we know with time, we'll, do, we'll have some big improvements ourselves. So the main, the, 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 it's an interesting variable, but it changes very little. I mean, there's bragging rights. Like I, if, I, if I pull 600 and this guy pulls 575 and I'm not natural, he gets the bragging rights there. Yeah. Now, if, he, if he's better than me and he's natural and I'm not, he's a lot better than me. He has all the bragging rights. So there's a little uh, intangibles, but it makes it kind of fun. Or, um, you know, the joke will say, if somebody has a PR, say, I pull, I pull 650. They'll say, well, that's easy for you to do, Tom. You're, you're not a natural lifter. And we always have a nice giggle about that. But um, you know, it's, it's, it's not that big a deal. It's really important. And when we start to compete at the higher levels, it's critically important. Again, we, you, you usually want a level playing field. So if, um, if you want to go somewhere with a natural powerlifting career, you might want to stay in some federations to do a lot of testing and they do accurate, real testing. Because um, as good as you can be, if someone else is, is, close to, is close to your natural talent, but they're not natural, you're just not gonna beat them. So um, we keep that in mind too. But uh, it, it's, it's a fun topic to talk about, and with, but there are some serious sides to it as well. But uh, we, we, try to, we, try to, we try to use our, our PEDs, our performance enhancing drugs, as little as possible. But again, a good analogy I learned a long, long time ago, it's between PEDs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. You can drink your whole life. You won't have a problem at all, live a long life, live a beautiful life, and everything's fine. But if you go crazy with alcohol, it will kill you. And PEDs are the same way. You can use them for 30 years, you can use PEDs your entire competitive athletic career, and you're gonna be fine. You could be a world champion, you probably will be. But if you go crazy with PEDs, unfortunately, they can kill you. That's unusual, but it can happen. So. Um, a little self-control, don't lie to your coaches, don't lie to your friends, don't lie to your doctors. And um, the drug-free lifters and the non-drug-free lifters, you get along just fine. Yeah, in, in all seriousness, uh, it is different because someone like myself, if you're natural, you tend to have to do a little bit more work. So I got to put a little bit more work in 
uh, a little bit more volume, in my opinion, than I think someone that doesn't. I don't give two shits if someone runs gear or not. I'm too big of a puss to do it myself, so uh, hats off to them. I, I have no problem whatsoever with it. Um, it's my way of controlling my abilities, I guess. It, it, it's gonna take a lot longer to get to my potential, which is not what that potential is, mine's less, but it's gonna take me more time, which hopefully will keep me lifting longer. That's my ultimate goal, because I wanna be doing this for many years. I'm 32, uh, I know I look like 48, but uh, my goal is to be doing this for a few more years, and I think it'll help me uh, prolong that. Yeah, so I think everybody recovers a little bit different. I mean, I think the big factors are gonna be sleep and diet, and Mine's not perfect, and I think that's gonna, gonna be the biggest factor for myself, and that's something I can't control. So whether I'm running gear or not, I think it's important that if I can't control my sleep, and I can't control my diet, that I do my best to do so. So that's something I can always work on, regardless if it's maximal or not. For me personally, I, I feel like there's such a huge dissension in, in overall training capacity and strength. It's pretty apparent, so you can't really get the additional motivation being around big, big guys or guys who are stronger. Not to say there's natty guys that are stronger than me, there's natty guys that are really fucking strong and they're blessed with genetics. But being that for the most part, the par is a huge dissension, you see it. So you just gotta take their intensity, pump them up, bring them up. That way no one feels out of place. And that's how you're able to, that's how I'm able to coexist with the, the natties and the not natties. Definitely dial it back because the training intensity on gear versus not on gear, you're, it's really the recovery time. So if I'm gonna have my girls going at full full speed, like I'm going full speed, it's gonna they're gonna they're gonna pretty much burn out pretty fast. So I dial it down, being because I was there the first seven years, I was all natty, and I was USAPL. So it was there is a learning curve and I'm taking that away from them so they don't have to experience that burnout or man, I run into a wall. So we use my knowledge so they can continue to break plateaus.